I studied what we call it Zen in Japanese, Chan in Chinese, and meditation in English with my master, the most venerable Thanh Tư in Vietnam. And our lineage is from the sixth patriarch in China, uh, Huy Nang. And then on the 13th century, our king, the Trang King, left his throne and he practiced meditation and he's a founder of our, what we call it Vietnamese Mayanan meditation. I'm here today to share with you how we learn and we practice because actually there's no point to learn uh, uh, Buddhism and not practicing it. And if talking about learning or reading, I believe that you might have read more than me and learning and hear more masters than me. You know, so what we need uh, to do is uh, how to practice and I can share with you how we practice and how we learn, what we learn and how we practice. Is it all right with you? Uh, so today I might start with a story. Once upon a time there was a, a what do we call it, a, 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 a boy. In the, the, the story said that he's very ugly and they don't describe how ugly it is. To me, everyone is uh, beautiful because we are human beings, we are beautiful anyway, you know. You don't know how to make up, there's no, no ugly people. You just know how to dress up neat and tidy and that's you are beautiful, regardless of the gender. <laughs> but it said, the story said that the, uh, the baby was so ugly and that's why when he was born, uh, Every baby is beautiful anyway, but the story said he's so ugly so the parents don't want him. So whether the parents are only the mother who couldn't afford to raise him so early, very early in the morning, because in the temple we wake up very early, three o'clock. Three o'clock the temple wake up and they heard this, uh, the baby cries in front of the uh, door. So they open the door and there the baby. So they had no choice. They had to bring the baby in and to raise the uh, the child, the baby. And that is the monastery, meaning that all monks, and they don't know how to how to look after the, the, the baby boy. So uh, because he's a boy, that's why they left him into the monastery. So the monks managed to raise him, and instead of having the cot, you know, the cot, you know, so they make, uh, in front of the temple, and they do have a big, uh, have you heard of that story before? If you have, please hear again, all right? So <laughs> there's a big, big tree, you know, like a hundred years tree, and there's a big branch. So instead of making him, making a baby a cot, they make a, a nest in that branch. So they raise a baby in the nest. And time passed, so the baby grown up, grown up, and, and he loved his nest. So he stays in there, and he's getting older, and he becomes a quite wise, a very, very good monk. But he lives there. So they call him Nest Monk. So one day, and he's there, you know, so he saw us. People, if they don't know that he's there, they don't see him. So one day there was a mandarin and uh, the, the government officer, we call him Mandarin, and he's been carried in, you know, and passing by. And the monk said, hey, stop! And he did not, he, oh, not the monk, he said, he, because he's a Mandarin, so he stay in that, uh, what do you call it, uh, the days or something to carry him, you know. And as a Mandarin, he doesn't look down. Where does he look? He looks up. So for other people, they don't see the nest monk, but him, he saw the nest monk there because he looked up like that. So when he saw the nest monk, he said, stop. He told his guard to stop. And then he said, hey monk, please get down. That's very dangerous. You stay there, dangling there, you know. And the monk said, no, I found this one very comfortable. This is my home, very comfortable since I was born. And yet I saw your chair is very dangerous. You know, and the mandarin says, that, how could it be? I have guards, so many guards around me, and I've been carried. Why do you say that is dangerous? So the nest monk says that, yes. And, and then I say, and by the way, do you know who I am? 
you know. And I said, I can see that you are a big Mandarin, not only a big Mandarin, who I am? I'm the Prime Minister, you know. So that is our Prime Minister. And he said that I am, so how could the chair that my day is uh, uh, dangerous? So the, the next monk said that, yes, that is even more dangerous. If you are a simple Mandarin, you are your, the chair is dangerous. But as you are a prime minister, this is more dangerous, the most dangerous. And why? And because a beep in front above you, there is only one, the king. But below you, there are so many people whom longing for your chair. Isn't it? And because they long for your chair, there might be some uh, fight inside, and they might say something, whisper something to the king's ears. And when the king is angry, and you know how he is angry anyway. So that's why I said that is dangerous. So our Mandarin is quite a, the prime minister, he's quite a very clever guy. So he took the lesson, he said, oh, that makes some sense. By the way, he's very famous, and he's a poet as well. And he said, so, uh, saying so, you know, I take your word for that, and I am grateful for your warning. So can you, as a monk, can you tell me the essence of Buddhism? All right, so today we share the essence of Buddhism from the next monk. So the next monk said that, do good deed, don't do evil, keep your mind pure, and that is a teaching of Buddha. You got it? Do good deeds, don't do evil. Keep your mind pure. And that is a teaching. And how our Prime Minister reacts. Do you have you sound that is so familiar to you? So familiar, isn't it? So familiar. And he said, Hey, hey, hey are you trying to pull my leg? <laughs> and because he says he said that this is a folk song. Every child knows that by heart. And you are telling me that is the essence of Buddhism. And don't you remember, I remind you that I'm the Prime Minister, I'm not easy to be fooled. And he says, yes. The monk said, yes. Every little child knows that by heart. You know, every eight-year-old child knows it by heart. But an 88-year-old person may not be able to practice it thoroughly. Do we get that? So, I don't think we have anyone 88 year old here, but we are from the average, you know. So, do we get it and practice it thoroughly? Do good deeds, don't do evil. Keep your mind pure. So simple, isn't it? And that is practically, absolutely the fundamental, the essence of Buddhism. So how should we use it into our daily life? How to do good deeds, how to not to do evil, and keep our mind pure. Now talking about good deeds or good, doing something good, it's very, very hard to explain, very hard to define, and how we do good. Good, what is good to you? Good to this person may not be good to the other person, isn't it? Sometimes you might help with all your heart to help that person, but it turns out to be the other, that person doesn't want it, right? So that is not good, right? Isn't it? That's we come across in our daily life. You know, so how can we define? And sometimes a good in this country is not good in the other one. In some way, you might have, you might you can have uh, up to four wives, and that's good. That's to prove that you are a man and a rich man, or somehow like that. But in here, uh, you are not allowed to do so. So how can we? Uh, where is the frame uh, to see it is a good or no good? Because uh, don't talk about the evil, it's just about the good. Because uh, maybe sometimes we know that is evil, but may not be evil either, the same like a good and evil. Okay? So how can we, where is a, a frame for us to follow? Is good and no good. So we have two laws. As a citizen, 
we abide the law where we live accordingly. And that's good. If the law said that you are not allowed to uh, use uh, uh, narcotics, and if you use narcotics, that's no good, that's evil. Clear? Because in some uh, country, everybody, they smoke marijuana, and that is good, right? So that is like that. So wherever you live, you abide that law, and that's good. That is a citizen. So as a Buddhist, how do we practice? Everywhere, apart from abiding the law where we live, we have, what do we have? As a lay people, what do we have? Yes, we have precepts. We have precepts. And as a lay people, we have five precepts. By the way, what is precepts and vows? Are there different? Because when you chant, you say, I vow that, I vow that, yeah, I vow to keep, I vow to do so and so. So what is a precept and what is a vow? Anyone know? What is a vow? I vow to chant the Heart Sutra every day. That is your vow. So that is a vow. So what is it? Yeah, the, the rules you want to keep, but that is from you, yourself. I vow that. Right? You make the vow and you keep it. Precept is uh, the same like a rule. You know? The vow is a rule, but you, you made it and you keep it. Precept is a rule, but that rule is from Buddha to dictate that and to say so, and we vow to keep the precepts, right? So these precepts are the guidelines for us to practice. So we know that we don't do evil, we do good deeds. For what purpose? We should know what for. We do good deeds, we don't do evil, what for? For what? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Promote further good. Do good to promote further good. To promote further good. What for? It, to be happy. To be happy, yes. To stop, to stop the suffering, isn't it? Remember from the last time? I'm sorry, I have to repeat it. So to stop the suffering. So how we stop the suffering to live in joy. So the precepts. And we all know about the five precepts, don't we? The first one is killing, stealing, lying, sexual misconduct, drinking narcotics. So remember the, the saying of the nest of monk, so simple, okay? But an 88-year-old person, when we say about 88-year-old person, meaning that he might practice it before that. Now up to 88 years old, do we, or now, have we practiced or have we kept it? Uh, in a good frame, thoroughly. When you take the precepts, when the monk gives you the first precept, if you believe that you can keep it, you say, yes, I keep it. And if you keep quiet, meaning that you don't keep it. So amongst the five precepts, if you keep all of them, that is a very good. I mean keeping in the term of keeping, not keeping as carrying the words. Okay, now we talk about killing. 
for the lay people. Killing, what does that mean, killing? You yourself actually do the killing. Okay? And then, killing has a three cents, not only that, because some people say, I don't kill, because they don't actually do the killing. They order other people to do the killing. Okay, and that is killing also. And if you don't actually do it, and you don't order other people to do it, when you hear someone, some people, actually for the lay people, the killing apply only to animal, uh, to people, to persons, just only that, not go further, because for us it goes further. That's why we are vegetarian. But for lay people, that apply only to human and human. So the third one, which is uh, more deeper, is in the sense that if you heard someone gets killed and you are happy, and that also killing. And so that means that in the action, in is accomplished and is in the thought, right? And now, and killing is not only actually chop other person's head, you know, but you feel like when they are uh, demote or something like you are so happy. You don't need to wait until that person dies or you uh, wish them dead. That also is a killing. Okay. And last month, I actually last week, when I explained to you about the tradition of our uh, Yulang releasing uh, the parents, the ancestors in the hell, and this is an opportunity for us to do some meritorious um, action by releasing. Creatures. Have you heard of that? <laughs> Have you heard of that? Because uh, how do we do good deeds if we don't do the killing, but we still want to do more good deeds? Right? So when uh, during that month is the good chance for everybody when we want to send, we, uh, send our merit to our ancestors. We took that uh, month, particularly the 15th, everybody went out and buy a lot of birds and a lot of fish and they released them. Called it Phong San, isn't it? And so, but that is a good act. You release animals, you don't kill them and you release them because why? The sense is we want life. We long for our life, so we don't stop other people living. Yet we release other people being captured. That is good. However, what we, what they did might not be good. So when you do it, you might it turn out to be not the good like you intend to. Because of people, because of they they want a lot of creature, right? Bring a lot of animals to. If you buy the birds and you release them, as like a release for their life, that's good enough. But they don't do so. They want ceremonies, big ceremony. So they gather a lot of uh, 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 animals like that, bringing into the temple. And so many had the same idea. Everyone bring it in. So we sort of uh, find a time to chant, big chant. So many monks and so many nuns gather together and chant and chant. It's a big ceremony and by the end they will open the cage for the birds to get out. And for so many days like that and being lived in, grounded in a small cage, some weak birds already that. So your action is releasing life, turn out to be the wrong one. 
So be aware of that. So if you do that precept and you want to do thoroughly and like the last month, month of July, if you want to do the releasing life, uh, do it in a wise way. Okay, so that is uh, when we learn uh, something, we learn to the depth, to the bottom of it. Don't just only do it as a robot. So that's killing. Now talking about stealing, stealing is uh, taking away, right? Taking something without permission, without asking, isn't it? And we don't do it. Do we really keep that? Do we really keep it? We don't think that stealing like a thieving coming back in the house. We don't do that quite okay. But when we go to work, do we accidentally take the pen home? Do we accidentally take paper home? It's just something like that, you know? And that is it. You are working like that. So think, think about that stealing, okay? And, and again, the, on these, uh, we have to base more often on the thought as well. I want to go deeper in that uh, second precept. We keep that. Maybe other people don't do it, and we live in the society. And so many people do that. And we turn out to be the victim of that action. Okay? So how can we react to that? How can we take in? Think again about the stealing. Someone steals something from you. Stealing is a picking by force, or without consent, or intimidating. Right? So there's so many people coming to me and saying that they've been the victim, right? And being abused, right? And that's taken years and years and years, and now they still very hurt. They still cannot live as ordinary. When the fundamental, the essence of Buddhism is that we should live with joy. Okay? But they are the victims of something, and that is abuse. So I said, I rephrase it. That someone stole something from you. Okay, because if they force, they do that, they force or whatever. So you are trapped, you know. Whether you were a baby, whether you are, because baby didn't know, so the baby were trapped and forced or intimidated or whatever they did it, that's already happened in the past. That's number one. And that's number two is that you don't agree, you know. And that is they stole it from you. And that I call it stealing. They commit a crime, but you are the victim of that crime. Why do you keep it? You are the victim. We are the victim. Why should we hurt? You got the point? You got the point? So we should not be still keeping that and hurting. I tell you more an image. When we were young, when we had to learn at school, if we are given a lesson to learn, how should we do it? We read it first, and then after that, we read it again. Every time we read it, we put it in our mind, isn't it? Until we don't need to look it up, and we still can recite it. So for how many times, uh, from five times, ten times, twenty times, depends on how intelligent the uh, student is. You got my point? And then now, if that happened in the past for so long, 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 okay, and every time, and that's already gone, the person who stole it, already gone. They did it with violence, they did it with ignorance, they did it whatever, they might have forgot it. But you still keep it like it's happened just the last minute. And every time you bring it up, 
bring it up and revive it and getting hooked and hooked and hooked and hooked. Okay? Rather, that is uh, stealing. Like uh, you have everything in your house. Your house got back in and they come in and they took things out. That's gone. That's gone. Am I clear? So that's stealing. So we just apply that. So we leave. We don't need to live with hurting. We don't want to hurt other people. But we don't need to be hurt either. You got the point? And then the third one is lying. Again, intention. And there's not only lying. I think the tongue has so many things, not only lying, isn't it? There are double tongue, is it? You call it double tongue. You come here and you say, sir, 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 and you go to the other person, da, 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 and you make these two people fight, and you are just watching, and that is the most, 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 isn't it? So you say, yeah, yeah, you just turn, turn the thing, and you know that how people are doing like that, and why they do that for? Why, why they do that for? Again, like a, why people commit on these crimes, why people do these evil for? Just for to satisfy their want, their ego, isn't it? So we don't want, we don't want to do like that. We don't lie, we don't go these, we just say no more. Because if you say honestly, you get trusted, isn't it? And why you say that I have a friend, I can't ever trust her. I can't ever trust him. Why? Because they don't say they are not honest. You can see that. So, seeing people around, we do different way. We keep our precept. We don't do like that. We say honest, correct, you know, in a wise way. Okay, so that is uh, the tongue. And what else? Sexual misconduct. And that's to do with, again, the stealing. And I think that with the five precepts, they are ties together, one to another, very close like that. If you want your family household happy, then don't destroy other people's. If you want to be honored, then don't damage other people, don't hurt other people in that regard. You got to be sincere with each other like that, if you want to form a family. And don't ever do the evil in that sense. You want that? And what else? The last one? Narcotics, drinking. And before when we think that drinking is not a big problem, but actually that is a cause of every other things. That because when you drink and you get drunk and you get lost, you, the mind lost and you can do everything. And that's happened every daily life. If you read the newspaper or if you heard the news, it happened in Vietnam, it happened here because that is a human problem. Just recently, one uh, a boy, he's not a boy, he's a man, he's in his thirties, and he went and he, he worked, and after work he dropped somewhere and he got drunk. And his mother at home in, his, uh, in her sixties uh, kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for him, and because when she waits, uh, she's worried, and the mind develops so many things, uh, and she's the mind running, so she's thinking that so many things are happening, and she's worried about him. And then by one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, he come home. And she's been waiting for so long, she's been so tired, so she start knocking at him, shouting and screaming at him. And he's, at that time, he's already drunk. He didn't know anything, so he just hit her and she died. So you see, that is just a symbol of a drinking. And we knew about that, but people still keep drinking and people still keep... Uh, doing drug trafficking, and then not until 
by the end, you get caught by the police, and then you put the blame on the police. Why he caught me? Right? You know, he's a, he's a, I'm luck, unlucky today, and and the police guy is very nasty guy. What the nasty guy? He caught me, and I'm in jail. So that is uh, why if we keep the five precepts thoroughly, are we live in joy? Correctly, you know. If we keep that, is already the guideline from Buddha to help us to do good deeds, don't do evil. From the five precepts, how to keep our mind pure? If we say about the mind pure, then we have the mind impure. Isn't it? Because if we said about the good, then because there is a bad. So if we said to keep the mind pure, meaning that our mind at the moment is not pure, do we agree like that? We have a mind and the mind impure. Okay? If you remember that Buddha said that I am Buddha and you will be Buddha if you practice. And why he said so? Because he, after 49 days under the Bodhi tree, he suddenly found out that he doesn't need to search anywhere because his Buddha nature, the true nature, our purity is with us all the time. You know, you don't need to go anywhere to uh, Africa to look like. If I send you to Africa to look for a di for a diamond, you might find it. You know, but our diamond is not in Africa. Our diamond is here with us every day. You are with it every day. You sleep with it without recognizing it. You got me. So it's just the pure, but why we lost it? Why we lost it and we live with what at the moment? Because we live with the impure, that's why crimes happen. And that's why we need to do good deeds, and that's why we need to stop doing evil. So why from here suddenly we lost it? Like I said last time, it is like a moon. But why we cannot see the moon? We see only the clouds. And what are these clouds? Our desire, isn't it? Our gaining and losing, and that's what we, the mind, is running. And that's why the mind is living with that impure. So how can we live with the pure? Number one, we need to know that we have the impure. Because if we don't have it, we don't know how to drop it. Isn't it? Because if we believe that we are pure, why, what's the point to drop it? And if we don't know, we might drop the, <laughs> the something wrong. Isn't it? So how can we help us coming back to the purity, to the serenity, what Buddha called it, the Buddha nature? That's what we are doing here. Isn't it? Meditation help us to delete or dropping, dropping on the impure from the mind. Because when we meditate, we sit down. That is a recommended position. And then when you sit down, the body is calm. And when the body is still, the mind starts running. Okay, running and running. And what we need to do is be awake. We awake, fully awake, to be aware that the mind is running. And when it runs, we let it go. When the thought arises, we let it go. And then we keep being aware. It is an image of a host, the owner, in the house, inside the house. And you sit in the lounge, and you, the host sit in the lounge, and sipping teas. 
and so many passerby in front of the house and some uh, come visiting the house knock knock and visiting and when some guests come and visit the horse in the house the horse can say hello and sit down and have your tea and then when the visitor get up and say goodbye the horse say goodbye the most you can do is uh, see the visitor at the door you don't follow the visitor to their home <laughs> you get the message <laughs> when the thought arise you are the horse you know hey you arise i acknowledge you are coming to see me thank you very much let's go and that's it you don't develop it you don't follow and don't develop and then another visitor come knock knock okay i acknowledge you right and you go and that's we call it awareness awakening you keep being awake like that every time the thoughts arise you awake and you aware and you let go and that's how you keep the mind calm because if you follow meaning that you are fall into the good and the evil hey i don't like that guy that guy said something to me this morning i could not reply now should i say like that he would be da -da 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 -da. <laughs> you got it so that is how that is a impure of the mind so we have the pure mind which is our true buddha nature and because the true buddha nature is get we get the impure with that one so instead of living with the pure we live with the impure and not only live with that we are proud of it we are proud of it because uh, you are acclaimed so proud but when you are so proud when you are acclaimed then when people criticize how do you feel you feel so not okay so down so ultimately who control our mind the outside, the acclaim, and the dishonor on these up and down. And so you run like that. If you are acclaim, you feel so happy. And that is a temporary happy in a temporary world. We all learn that everything is a getting together, and that's why it breaks. It never lasts. It's impermanent. We learn that. The two criteria of everything in the world is number one, it is not the entity. It is a getting together. And the number two is it is impermanent. We know that, but yet we still abide on their value. We the one who put the value anyway. And then we put the value and we get hooked to that. And we abide at that. And we forgot the pure in here. So if from now on we study and we practice that, keep the mind pure, then you don't need to do the good or the evil. Because when the mind is pure, then there is no good and evil. You are already in your true nature. Is it clear? There is a story why we are in that impure because we always think that uh, and particularly when we are the learner and when we are the learner the scholar we are more intelligent and we always uh, prove that we are the knowledgeable and that's how we are living in that up and down so there's a story of the three this is a very telling story the zen story of the three guys and <coughs> And you know that we, when we are together, and we want to prove that I am better than you, isn't it? Always like that. And three guys. And there is underneath, and there is suddenly one guy up the hill. So the three guys underneath suddenly look up, saw that guy up the hill. And one said that, suddenly there was a question, that what is he there for? Why he's there for? And that's none of your business anyway, but they seem uh, because he's there. So one answer is, uh, he's going up there, 
having fresh air, you know, contemplating nature and having fresh air. The other one said, no, don't think so. He's going there because he's a poet. He got inspirations there, and so he can make so many poems there. The other one said, no, I don't think so. He go there waiting for someone, okay, and they don't agree with each other. So who's the best to answer to their query? The guy himself. So they're clever to say, let's ask the guy, so he will see. He is the best referee, you know, so who's amongst us is correct, you know. You see how we want to be correct? And they go up there and they ask, hey guy, what are you doing there for? And before the guy can answer, one says that, are you um, making some poems? He said, no. Uh, are you contemplating nature and breathing fresh air? He said, no. Uh, ah, the last one said, so you probably waiting for someone. And he said, no. And so the three of them said, so why are you there for? He said, I'm here. You want it? I'm here. I'm just here. That's all. No need to, to ask a why there, why, why, why. Do you get the point? There was another story. <laughs> the two uh, temples. And in the temples we do have, uh, uh, we call acolyte, you know, little boys, you know, like a messenger, you know, courier, you know, messenger. So, Every morning, and the two uh, abbots, uh, they sort of, they teach, you know. And we have the saying that if you see the student, you see the teacher, something like that. So, the point is, uh, you got the point, you know, anyway. So, they go, every morning, the abbot send the boy to do some uh, shopping, at, that's all, you know. So one boy get out, the other boy get out, and they met midway. And one boy asked the other one, where are you going? They go shopping, he goes shopping, so he should know the other one goes shopping. But still, I am the knowledgeable, you know. Where are you going? The other one said that I go wherever my feet take me. Ah, <laughs> uh, and this one cannot answer, so he come back and he said to his abbot, he said, eh. he said eh. so the abbot said that, tomorrow when you ask him the same question, and if he reply, and then you say that, what if you have no fit? <laughs> this is a so Zen master, right? So the following day, the boy <coughs> met the other one, and asking, where are you going? So, and he expect the same answer, Yet the boy answered unexpectedly to this boy, said, I'm going wherever the wind takes me. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so he cannot answer. So get back to his teacher again. Uh, the teacher says, you idiot, why don't you say that? If there's no wind, where, where, where do you go? If there, if, what if you, there's no wind? Okay. So the next day the boy get out and asked the same question. And the other boy said, I'm going shopping. <laughs> you know that? Don't try to be smart. Okay? <laughs> and Buddhism is just remain in do sincere and honest. You, know? you live with your sincerity, honest. And your sincerity is your purity. Keep the mind pure, easy here, and you don't make any difference, you don't judge, there's no difference, you know. And that's why if the law say that is good, you do it. And that is uh, sincere and honest, and you can share and care. Other than that, if you try to show your knowledge that there's a lot of people who show, they know more terminology than me, you know. And obviously, I don't read more books than anybody else. I haven't got time, no chance. I just read and, and listen from my master. And this is not even t I have time to listen to all he says, you know. So, and whenever I explain something, they give me a term. 
And which is correct, that is a term. I, we never use this term. So don't learn Buddhism with terms. Practice it. That's what Buddha said. He said that after he dies, after he passed away, if people respect him in terms of practicing. Right? So practice it. And if don't do good, do evil. Keep the mind pure. And the mind pure is uh, drop on the ego, drop on these differences. We are not the knowledgeable because if we know this, people know more than us anyway. It's clear. Any questions? Can I undo some things? Have I undone some things? If you keep something so much in your heart, Hurting, hurting, hurting. Some people even vow that I carry it to death. Why so? You know, and keep revenge. Whom do you hurt? Yourself, not the other person. And if you can see that, just drop it. There is a master who never teach anything to his uh, students. He keep his uh, uh, talks quiet. All he does is. <laughs> when you cling, you hurt and you drop it. So that's how you live with joy. Drop, drop, drop. Do I have time for another story? There was a, at Buddha's time when he was a, Teaching and there is in another area there was another uh, uh, he he's um, he's a good teacher as well and but one day after his lecture uh, it says that the uh, the deities you know come and pay respect to him and cry and he said why do I give a wrong things or something he said no your Talk is very good. Your lesson is very good somehow. However, I knew that your longevity comes to the end. That's why I cry for myself because I no longer hear you. So he starts being so frightened. He says, so whom can save me? And the deity said that I heard that in another area there is a, a um, Buddha who can save you. Maybe you come and can, and he can save you. So he come and pay respect to Buddha and asking for rescuing him. On the way to Buddha, he saw beautiful plant. So with all his magical power, he carried both plant onto his hands, and he come and see Buddha, and walking from the entrance to the Buddha. And when Buddha saw him, Buddha said, drop. So he dropped one plant, and he come closer, and Buddha said, drop, and he dropped another plant. And then he come closer, and Buddha said, drop. And he said, Buddha, I come here with two plants to offer to you, and you already told me to drop, and I have dropped them, and how come you say, drop again, which one I should drop, right? So Buddha said that, I don't tell you about these plants. I told you to drop, what? To drop what? If you know what to drop, then you will be enlightened and you will live longer without this dead body. And that's how we live with joy. You drop the greed, you drop the anger, you drop the ignorance. These are three drops, and then that will help you to live with joy. Or another interpretation is if you drop your sixth sense, and six sense objects, and your sixth consciousness. Because when you see the object, you create your judgment. Right? So if you, that's how one of our practice is uh, the six sense, meet with the six sense objects, you stay at that. Don't develop. You know, no more thought. If you see that, that's it. And that's to stop you from stealing or thinking of stealing as well. If you see something, fine. At that. 
So the six sense, six sense objects, and the six consciousness, if you drop these, no problem. Particularly, actually, you drop the six sense, the six consciousness, the judgment, the differences, the value you put in. The, in another word, the thought, drop it from running. Let it go. Don't follow it. I come back to the horse. You stay inside, and you let them out. Okay, and you sit still and calm. Is it clear? Any questions? So I hope that we always the horse in our house, sitting tea. <laughs> let the passerby, <laughs> and you can watch them uh, with a smile. If we have no questions, we transfer the marriage.